So this is problem 7.2 out of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, edition 3. And if you wouldn't mind before we get started, go ahead and like the video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe, and I will post more solutions. So this is problem 7.2. This is more perturbation theory. For the harmonic oscillator, we have the potential 1 half kx squared. The allowed energies are... En equals n plus one half h bar omega for n equals zero one two, where omega is the square root of k over m, uh, is the classical frequency. Now suppose the spring constant is slightly increased. K equals now one plus epsilon times k. Perhaps we cool the spring so it becomes less flexible. Find the new exact, find the exact new energies. Trivial in this case. Expand your formula as the power series in epsilon up into the second order. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we have k prime equals 1 plus epsilon k. And that's going to be helpful for us because our energy level is n plus one half h bar omega and as it mentions there omega is the square root of k over m so as k changes omega also changes so omega prime is the square root of k prime over m and we know what k prime is so i'm just going to plug that in So this is actually equal to the square root of 1 plus epsilon. And then this is just our original omega. Okay, so that's completely fine to do. We can break that up that way. And now we need to expand 1 plus epsilon to the 1 half power. And we're going to use the Taylor series, which tells us the Taylor series from equals zero to infinity the nth derivative a over n factorial x minus a to the n so we use the taylor series a lot in uh, quantum two and we're continuing that with this problem so let's go ahead and write this down so we have f prime at epsilon of epsilon is going to be 1 half 1 plus epsilon to the minus 1 half evaluated at epsilon equals 0 and the second derivative will be minus 1 fourth 1 plus epsilon to the minus 3 halves evaluated at epsilon equals 0 so we'll get 1 over 1, and factorial is just 1. Epsilon to the 0 power, so that's the first term. No derivative, just our function evaluated epsilon equals 0, so that's 1. Over 0 factorial is 1. And then epsilon minus 0, so just epsilon to the 0th power. Plus 1 factorial is 1, but we still have the 1 half from our first derivative. Now it'll be epsilon to the first, and now we'll have a minus epsilon, minus one eighth epsilon squared. So two factorial is two, times the minus one fourth is minus one eighth epsilon squared. Okay? And obviously, anything to the zeroth power is just one. So we can say one plus epsilon, the square root of this, to the second order is just 1 plus 1 half epsilon minus 1 eighth epsilon squared. Okay. So omega prime is going to be equal to this. Times the original omega. And then we can find our energy. 
essentially all we're doing is replacing this omega with the omega prime. So I'll just write it out really quick. So this is n plus a half. I'm going to go ahead and put down this other stuff. So 1 plus 1 half epsilon minus 1 eighth epsilon squared h bar omega. And that is your new energy. So that is part A. And now part B. Part B says calculate, calculate the first order perturbation in the energy using equation 7.9. What is H prime here? Uh, it's not necessarily, in fact, not permitted to calculate a single integral while doing this problem. So the equation that they reference is this one. Uh, this would be our first order correction. So this is the equation referenced. And they're asking what h prime is. That's kind of a hint. Well, we know that h prime is equal to h minus h naught. I think the naught goes up there. Maybe it goes at the bottom. And h naught, that's our unperturbed Hamiltonian. That's going to be your momentum operator squared over 2m plus 1 half kx squared. And h prime, our deviation, that's going to be the same thing, except instead of k, it's now k prime x squared, because that changed when we change our k, obviously. So to find h prime, which is what we use in that equation, we subtract these two. So p hat squared over 2m minus p hat squared over 2m, well, that's going to be just 0. So what you really have is just the difference in your potential. So 1 half k prime x squared minus 1 half k x squared. Okay. And we could factor out the common factors. So 1 half x squared, that's common in both. And you're left with just k prime minus k which is 1 half x squared. So k prime, again, is k times 1 plus epsilon, which is just k plus k epsilon. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. k plus k epsilon minus k. Well, we're left with just k epsilon. So 1 half k x squared epsilon. And hopefully you notice that this is just our potential V. So this is equal to just V epsilon. Okay. So with that in mind, we can continue and plug that in. We can plug in that into here because that's our H prime. The epsilon, that can just be factored out. There's nothing crazy about that. Now, it doesn't mention this in the problem. Um, I don't think it does. This was a hint given to us by our professor. And that's the Louisville theorem, I believe it is. Where your kinetic energy is equal to your potential energy. Which means that your total energy... This is just our total energy. If I plug another v into here, then that's one-half v equals e, or v equals 2e, which I can again plug into here, and I'm going to get epsilon and that e can actually come out and we know what that E is, so that's fantastic. Okay. 
this inner product is just 1. So we have epsilon times E. And we know that... So we have epsilon times n plus 1 half h bar omega. And this is our first order correction. So the trick is really to use Louisville theorem and you can avoid doing any sort of integral. Um, definitely feel like this could be a possible question to put on an exam, I don't know. But uh, hopefully that helps if this was a homework problem or just something you're interested in. And if it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you.